All right, so let's see if you know what to do to solve this math problem. Okay, so we have a triangle here, but uh, really we have a triangle within a triangle. But uh, let's take a look at this information. So this side of the triangle, of the larger triangle, is 9. We don't have this side. And this side right here is uh, made up of two uh, segments. So this side right here is x, and this side right here, or this uh, segment of this side is 4. Now this height of this smaller triangle is 6. Okay, so uh, kind of looking at this figure, the question is, what is x? So this is what we're trying to solve for x right here. And again, we have a triangle within a triangle. All right, now, if you think you know how to solve this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer here is 8. Okay, so x is 8. Now, if you got this right, well, you're going to get an A+, plus, a 100%, a happy face, and a certificate of excellence for your knowledge of similar right triangles. Okay, so that is what we have here, similar right triangles. And this is a big, uh, important topic in geometry. This is not that difficult, but uh, if you don't know what is similar or what similar right triangles are, well, you definitely want to pay attention to this uh, video. Okay, so if you like Mr. YouTube Math Man, I forgot all of this stuff. Well, no big deal. I'm going to review it and solve this problem. Matter of fact, uh, let's go ahead and get started right now. Okay, so once again, the key to uh, figuring out this uh, problem is to understand that we are dealing with similar right triangles. Okay, now what does that mean, similarity in geometry? Well, to understand uh, similarity, we want to review another concept called congruency. So let's suppose I have a triangle. Matter of fact, I'll just kind of sketch one out like this. And let me go ahead and grab this triangle and let's make an exact copy of this triangle. Okay, so here are two triangles. They have the exact same shape and size. All right, so when you have two figures that are exact copies of, of one another, in other words, they have the same angles and the same lengths of their sides, this concept in geometry is called congruency. All right, so this is the uh, symbol for congruency. So uh, this is in contrast to a similarity. All right, they are similar, but they are different. Okay, so here is our triangle, but this time we're going to kind of zoom this triangle out. Now, these two triangles right here are similar, and the symbol for that is this little squiggly symbol right there. Now, these two triangles are, uh, they have the same angles, okay, but they have different lengths. So, I like to think of similarity as zooming in or zooming out. Okay, so similar figures or similar triangles have the same uh, angles, but uh, different sides, All right? So this is similarity and this is congruency. Okay, so how do we establish that uh, two triangles or two figures are similar? Well, we need to establish that the angles are the same. Okay, so let's take a look at these uh, two triangles. We have a big triangle and a small triangle, but uh, both triangles are right triangles, all right? So in other words, right here, uh, this little square square indicates that uh, these angles are 90 degrees. Okay, so knowing that, let's suppose this angle right here, we don't have it, but uh, let's just kind of think of this angle temporarily as maybe like 30 degrees. So let's uh, focus in on the large triangle, okay? So we know this is 90, this is 30. Well, what's this angle right here? Well, the sum total of the angles in any triangle is 180 degrees. So this angle right here must be 60 degrees because 30 plus 60 is 90 plus another 90 is 180 degrees. Okay, so knowing that, let's go ahead and take a look at the smaller triangle. Okay, so the smaller triangle has uh, 90 degrees right here as well, okay, just like the large triangle. And it also shares this angle right here with uh, the large triangle, okay? It's also 30 degrees. So whatever angle this is uh, in the large triangle, it's the same angle in the small triangle as well. 
So if this is 90 and this is 30, well, this angle right here must also be 60 degrees. Okay, so we established that uh, both the small triangle and the large triangle have the exact same angles. So that means that these two triangles are similar. Okay, so what does it mean or what's the value of knowing that uh, you have two similar figures? Well, the big concept here is that the sides are in proportion. So let's uh, take a look at these uh, two similar triangles right here. So what it means uh, to uh, have proportionate sides is that if you took this side, and again, these two triangles right here would be similar. If you took this side right here and you divided it by this side, or maybe like the height divided by the base, well, that is going to be the same value or same ratio as if we take the height over here and divide it by the base of this triangle right here, okay? So um, similar figures and similar triangles are in proportion. So this is a huge concept to understand in geometry, and we can use this concept to solve for x. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into that part right now. Okay, so once again, we are dealing with similar right triangles, and I just uh, showed you how we can establish uh, that uh, two triangles are similar. Now, in geometry, you learn a lot of uh, theorems and postulates uh, to establish a congruency and uh, similarity, but uh, I guess the main uh, concept to remember about similarity is that if you can establish that uh, two figures, whether they be triangles or something else, have the exact uh, same angles, well, they are similar. Okay, so now we can use some algebra to figure out what x is equal to. So what we want to be doing here is comparing the height of the small triangle to its base. So the height of the small triangle is 6, its base is x. Now the height of the large uh, triangle is 9, and its base is x plus 4, right? So it's in this entire length. So this right here is x, this right here is 4, so its entire base is x plus 4. Okay, so we can compare uh, the same sides. In other words, we can compare the height to the base of each triangle we will have the same value. So this is what we call a proportion in math. All right, so uh, sometimes it's easier to see these uh, two triangles. You can kind of break them out like this, but uh, here is the height, here is the base of the small triangle, here is the height of the large triangle, and here is the base of the large triangle. Okay, so what we wanna do is set up a proportion or two equal fractions. So the height over the base, will be equal to the height over the base when you have two similar figures or two similar triangles. All right, so let's go ahead and set this up. And in algebra, it will look like this. All right, so 6 over x is going to be equal to 9 over x plus 4. So anytime you have a sum or difference uh, in algebra, anything that uh, you are adding or subtracting a variable to, go ahead and put parentheses around that, uh, put parentheses around that expression. That's really going to help you out. Okay, so now we have this proportion right here. And uh, if we can solve for X, we can figure out uh, what, um, or we can actually answer the question. So now we need to get into the steps to solve uh, this uh, proportion. And I'm gonna solve this in just one second. Now, before we continue on, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me help as many people as possible on YouTube. Now, my channel is all about trying to make math clear, understandable, and interesting. Also, I'm trying to encourage people that are having a tough time in math to never give up. So if you enjoyed this content, again, hit that subscribe button. And if you're gonna do that, hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, now before I get into the algebra to solve this proportion, let's just do a quick review. So the main idea to solve this uh, problem is to understand that these two triangles are similar, okay? And we established uh, that fact because we showed that uh, they have the same angles, right? So first, they are both right triangles. And then, of course, these uh, two angles right here are uh, the same, or we show that, that they are the same. And that means that these angles right here must be the same as well. All right, so when you have two triangles with the exact same angles or two figures 
with the exact same uh, angles? Well, that means they are similar. But uh, practically, that means that they are in proportion, right? So yes, indeed, they are similar. But uh, what does that really mean to us? Well, it means that the respective sides are in proportion. So if I take the height and divide it by the base of the small triangle, well, you're going to get the same value as taking the height and dividing it, dividing it by the base of the large triangle. Okay, so that means that we can set up a proportion to solve for x. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into uh, the math to solve this proportion. Okay, now by definition, a proportion is one fraction that, equal, that is equal to another fraction. So in other words, if I had 1 over 2, and this is equal to 4 over 8, well, this is one fraction that is equal to another fraction. Well, the main property to solve a proportion is the cross product, right? So if you cross multiply, uh, the values will be the same. So 8 times 1, well, that is 8, and that is equal to 2 times 4, which is 8. So anytime you have a proportion, the cross products are equal. All right, so keep that in mind uh, in this problem because this is exactly what we need to do to solve for x. All right, so we're going to take this 9 and multiply it by x, and then that's going to be equal to 6 times x plus 4. All right, so 9 times x is 9x. And now here, I'm going to show you a very, very common algebra mistake that students make in these uh, types of problems. So 6 times x plus 4, a lot of uh, students would write, or people would write, 6x plus 4. Well, that is wrong, right? So 6 times x plus 4 is 6 parentheses x plus 4. You have to have this in parentheses, right? So 6x plus 4 is not 6 times x plus 4. So that's why um, uh, I emphasize to always put parentheses around your sums and differences in algebra. So if you have a variable and you're adding or subtracting something to it, put parentheses around it so you can avoid this very common mistake. Okay, so now that we understand that uh, the cross product in this proportion is 9x, that's going to be equal to 6 times x plus 4 written this way. Well, now we can solve for x. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this uh, simple algebra. So 9 times x is 9x. 6 times x plus 4 in parentheses is this. Okay, so now all we have to do is uh, the distributor property. So this is 6 times x. That's 6x uh, plus uh, 6 times 4, which is 24. And that'll be equal to 9x. Okay, so here we have one number. It's on the left-hand side. We'll leave it there and we'll move our variables over to the right. Typically, we like to put our variables on the left and our numbers on the right, but if it's easier to leave your number on the left and move your variables to the right, that is perfectly fine as well. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is uh, to subtract 6x from both sides of the equation and add down. And uh, when we do that, we're going, to get to, uh, we're going to end up with, excuse me, 24 is equal to 3x. All right, so our final step to solve this equation is to divide both sides of the equation by 3. So 24 divided by 3 is 8, so x is equal to 8, which is the solution to our problem. Okay, so the main idea here, outside of uh, you know similar figures, and congruency, and all that kind of stuff, is that in geometry, you use a lot of algebra, okay? So if you are uh, not that strong in algebra and you're trying to learn geometry, well, you're going to have a tough time. So make sure you go back and review or strengthen your algebra skills when you are trying to understand geometry. But uh, beyond that, the only way to really kind of retain and uh, master all of this is, you know, really boils down to practicing. Because if you're like, hey, Mr. D2 Math Man, I understand what's going on here, no big deal. Well, I think a lot of people, they'll, they'll watch me solve a problem and they will understand. But uh, in, let's say, you know, a few weeks from now or a month, could you actually remember, you know, uh, how to do this problem? Okay, so the only way you're going to remember and retain is by practicing, practicing, practicing.
Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in geometry, check out these courses right here. So in my pre-algebra course, I have a couple of chapters on basic geometry. But uh, if you have to understand all things geometry to include uh, proofs, then you got to check out my full geometry course. Now, if you want a good math review of basic math, algebra, and geometry, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. All right, so I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.